optimized media. Some of us love it, some of us hate it. But in this video, I'm gonna tell you why you should never use optimized media again and start using this other proxy method that offers smaller file sizes, portability, and overall just give you better performance when editing high quality footage in DaVinci Resolve. But first, if you're new here, my name is Billy Ripka and I make weekly DaVinci Resolve tutorials about different effects, transitions, and workflows that'll help you become a better editor. So if you wanna level up your editing skills, click the subscribe button and the bell notification to stay up to date on the newest videos put out but let's just get into it so if you guys don't know what a proxy is it is a lower resolution version of a high quality clip now that high quality clip would put a lot of strain on your computer so what we do is we make a lower resolution version of that clip so that when we edit everything goes way smoother and you're not using that high quality version instead we're using the proxy version and now we can make proxies a few different ways in DaVinci Resolve one of which is by using optimized media. Yes, optimized media does make it way easier for your computer to read the file. But the problem with it is that it creates incredibly big file sizes. And not only will it make a big file, it will also take hours to generate optimized media at times. Now this new proxy method that I'm about to show you will eliminate all of those problems. But unfortunately, there is a little trade-off and it is a little more work on your part. It's not just hitting a button, it's hitting a few buttons and having good file management but let's just get into it so now that we're in DaVinci Resolve we want to actually import all of our media into the project but we want to do it in a way to where it keeps our folder structure inside of DaVinci Resolve so go into the cut tab and click on the import folder button right here and now go ahead and find the folder that has your media in it this will be different for everybody it just depends how and where you store your video clips but if you want my exact folder structure there is a download link in the description so now that I found my folder, you can see that I have footage right here. And I don't really want to import any audio or anything else right now, just because that doesn't actually pertain to this tutorial, but I want to import all of my footage. So I'm just going to click on my footage right here, then select the folder and you're going to get this pop up that just says the frame rate doesn't match. I always just hit cancel. I want to stay at 24 frames per second and that's what my project is set to. So once we have our folder imported into DaVinci Resolve, just jump back to the edit tab. So now in our media pool, you can can see that we have our folder structure created in the bins within DaVinci Resolve. And notice that I have the file types labeled under each category. So A roll has the MOV and MP4, B roll has MOV and MP4. There's a really important reason why I have this. With this new proxy method, what we're going to be doing is actually transcoding our files to a lower resolution version of themselves. So we have to keep the original file types. If we have an MOV file and we just decide that we're going to transcode it over into MP4, it won't work because your original high quality file was an MOV and now you just transcode this lower resolution version of that high quality file over to an MP4 so you won't be able to switch them out and ultimately just render this whole process totally pointless. So it's very important that you know what file types you have. Is it MP4? Is it QuickTime? Is it something else? If it's something else like AVI, make sure that there's a folder that's labeled AVI, but just make sure that the file types stay the same. So MOVs are transcoded to MOVs, MP4s are transcoded to MP4s, AVIs are transcoded to AVIs. Now, unfortunately, Resolve will not just sort this all out for you like Premiere Pro. So that's why we just have to be more organized with our folder structure. So as I had mentioned, we need to transcode the file types individually. So that means that MP4s are transcoded separate from MOVs. So let's just select all of our MOV files. And you can do that by holding control and just clicking on each bin that's labeled MOV. Now highlight all of the MOV clips and go to file and select media management. So now you see that the media management window pops up and that we have a bunch of options. We have entire project, timeline or clips, and we can either copy or move or transcode all of those. So if you only have one file type in your project, like MOV, then you can hit entire project. And if you only have one file type on your timeline, then you can hit timeline. But since we have like a mix and match of a bunch of different file types like MOV and MP4, then we're gonna hit clips because we selected all of the MOV clips. And then we wanna transcode the files, so just click on that. Now just select the place where you want these proxies to be stored. I usually have them within the same project folder, but just under proxies as opposed to footage, because this is actually not like the high quality footage. These are going to be the lower resolution virgin. 
do not put that in there. These are going to be the lower resolution versions. So just make sure that it's not stored in the same place as your original footage. That'll just mess everything up. So if we look down here, we can see that the current size and the new size of the files selected are zero kilobyte. And that's because we have to change it from transcode only used media to transcode all media. And you can see that we have like 38 gigabytes worth of footage. And it also says that our new footage, 30 gigabytes. That's all right, but uh, we're not looking for that big a file. 30 gigabytes is way too big. So just scroll down here and make sure that our video format matches the original format of the clips. So as I said earlier, we have all of the MOV files selected. So just hit the drop down arrow right here and select QuickTime because QuickTime is MOV. Then just leave it on H.264. And now under encoder, if you have an NVIDIA GPU like I do, then change it from native to NVIDIA. If not, probably gonna take longer to render out, but that's fine. So once you have all of that, just scroll down here. And now here is where we can really change the size of our media. Under quality, we have two options. We have automatic and restrict two. Select restrict two. And right now you can see that it's set to 80,000 kilobytes. Now uh, we wanna change that to like 4,000. Now we can see our new size is just under two gigabytes for all of these files. So to scroll down and make sure that everything makes sense. I mean, you really don't have to change anything, but if some of you guys want to just check your settings with mine, go ahead, pause the video, do your thing. Then just go ahead and hit start and DaVinci Resolve is going to go ahead and transcode those files over. But then you have lower resolution copies of your footage and you have actual proxies. And then you can take those proxies. And if you're working with somebody else, right, they don't actually need the original files. They could just edit off of those proxies. So guys, I have a really cool thing to announce. As of today, I'm launching a pack. Now this pack has 21 high quality 4K subscribe buttons, bell notifications, like buttons, and a combination of all of those, plus high quality sound design for all of it. And one of the best things is that you can use this pack on any editing platform out there, even Premiere Pro. So if you guys are interested in this pack, click the link down below so you can check this pack out. We have put so much time into this. I just hope you guys enjoy it. So once that finishes, we're gonna select the MOV files in our bin. Now right click on one of them and select change source folder. So you can see that we have two file paths here. We have our current location, and this is where our media is originally located. So we don't actually have to mess with the top. Instead, we wanna change the source folder to the folder that holds our proxy. So click browse and select the proxy folder for this project. Then just go ahead and click change. And you can see that it literally doesn't look like it did anything. But let me tell you, it actually did do something. Let me show you. So if we go into our open file location, you can see that our media is now in the proxy folder and it's reading the lower resolution version that we just created. So now we can just take those lower resolution files that are just super easy for DaVinci Resolve to read and move them all around in your timeline, create our whole project. And then once your whole project is completed and you wanna render it all out in its full 4K or high quality HD, you can go ahead and just change these proxies out with that high quality footage. To do that, select all of the the MOV files again and make sure that your timeline is not included or any audio clips because if any other file type is included then it's actually just not gonna work and all of your media will show offline now if you are having that little issue you can just go ahead and click relink and try it again then once you have only the MOV file selected right click on one of them and go to change file location to then change it back to the original file location where our high quality versions work. Now, after seeing this, you might ask yourself, why don't I just use optimized media? Like it just seems so much simpler. And yes, it is simpler because it's just like one click of a button, but you will not have flexibility and portability and you won't have small file sizes. And this method, once you get it down is so good and it's so easy to use, especially if you want to work on multiple computers or with other editors. I have personally been using this as my go-to method for creating proxies in DaVinci Resolve, but just try it out, see if it works for you. So anyway, there you have it, the new proxy method in DaVinci Resolve. If you thought this video was helpful, give it a like and also share it with your friends so that they can do this proxy method too. Anyway, as usual, the video on the top is a video all about the isolation effect in DaVinci Resolve, and the video on the bottom is a video that YouTube thinks that you would like. But until the next one, peace.